Hi, I'm Luke Stock. I'm a Senior Director for Solution Engineering at Sigma. And I'm Luke Stanky. I'm a Product Evangelist at Sigma. Today we're going to talk about the what I call the dashboard dilemma of mm -hmm. most enterprise data teams. And that dilemma looks a little bit like this. It's a really, uh, I think it seems all innocent to begin with, but as you go through it, because it, it looks a lot like how an, a team works in an agile form, mm. but really what you're creating is this vortex that you can never escape yeah. out of it. And it looks a little bit like this, like you take your data and you ingest it, and then eventually uh, it's going to go through a cycle and it's going to come back out. And in this process, you're going to be uh, sort of working through it. And at some point you've ingested data and that data is ready. From there, that data uh, then goes to a business team and that business team starts to explore the data. After they've explored the data, uh, in many cases, this data has been pre-aggregated for the scale that it needs to work at. And the data or the business team identifies a challenge with the data and they need to make an update to it. It's not quite the way they need it. Uh, but ultimately in the process that they're working in, they need to put in a ticket. Mm -hmm. And that ticket, uh, again, this is happening everywhere. So they're putting in a ticket because there's a data team that needs to organize this data and there are many requests. And the only reason they need that ticket is because the requests are coming in everywhere. But eventually that data team does some engineering and gets that data back into a place where you can be successful. Mm -hmm. Of course, this data then comes back and the data is ready for a business team to, again, explore and find what it needs. And the reason we come to this cycle that exists is that in order for most teams to work, they choose a BI platform, sort of something in the traditional realm that connects uh, and was designed for maybe a million rows of data. However, there is, uh, they can't go beyond that because of performance issues. Yeah. And so what ends up happening is you bring this data in, you start to explore, you put your ticket in, engineering gets the data ready, uh, and then the same problem occurs, and you end up in this sort of cycle, this loop, until the data is ready. So how do you get out of this endless vortex? Well, uh, we're not out of the vortex quite yet. The way you do get out of it is that eventually you get to a dashboard. Oh, a dashboard. And of course, we all love our dashboards. However, we have created ourselves sort of a, a dilemma here in that in this process of connecting to data and exploring and putting in a ticket, you have these business users who are sitting here sort of asking the question, why do I need to wait? Why can't I just connect to the raw data? Yeah, because typically going from filing a ticket to getting back to explore, how long would that take typically? So oh, this process for any team, given the size and scale, can be uh, in a good scenario, a week, in a bad scenario, months, that you're having to deal with this. Because again, this engineering team is having to prioritize many tickets from many users and having to identify amongst themselves what data is most feasible for them to put together and deliver to teams. And mm -hmm. it's, it's not the, by any means the fault of the engineering team. They're just working with the technology that they are uh, able to support, which is often not chosen by the data teams in terms of needs of this business itself. Mm -hmm. So they're stuck with these tickets and this dilemma because of the selection of the technology. All right. So I'm starting to understand this uh, dashboard dilemma much better. What else is there to it? Is, is it just, okay, we have a dashboard or where does it go from there? Well, there's a, there's a couple of scenarios and I wanna walk through those. Uh, again, you bring in your data, you start to ingest, and you end up potentially in this cycle. The challenge becomes that the business teams that want to explore this know this vicious cycle that they have to go through, and ultimately they have to make a decision. And it's not an easy decision for them to make, but uh, maybe it is at, at the end of the day, and that is that they have to export that data out from their data warehouse and okay. decide to sort of go on their own. And they export that data out and they bring it into a spreadsheet. But the problem is, is that 
Usually the scale of this data cannot be brought into a single spreadsheet. It has to get brought into several spreadsheets. And for every one of those spreadsheets, they're doing an analysis to find a certain set of numbers. And then this workflow that they've developed here needs to be consolidated down even further into another spreadsheet. And that ultimately these one set of numbers that they were looking through across all spreadsheets get consolidated into one location. And then they're finally able to start taking action. The challenge with this is that the workflow itself goes into a manual process. Mm -hmm. And this manual process then loses its ability to scale, its ability to be secure, the speed of which it can perform becomes a challenge. And that's all because, again, we come back to this loop and it's ultimately this loop exists because of the underlying technology. Yeah. So I'm picking up on a few themes here. So I heard like scale issues a lot. Um, I heard speed, but the issue is that it's slow. That's, That's the problem. It's the entire process. Uh, it is slow within this cycle, but then uh, as you hit the eject button mm -hmm. and you move into spreadsheets, you have the same dilemma of speed, but uh, that speed isn't necessarily... Uh, that speed isn't necessarily there for you, right? It's you're, you're waiting, so you hit the eject button to get the data out to Excel. I feel like there's uh, a problem by just taking data out of the single version of the truth. I mean, I can imagine that this isn't just one person's spreadsheet. It could be 500 people doing this. Yeah, we, well, first of all, there's a security issue, but then in this process that's happening manually outside of it is that as every extract occurs, there's now an asynchronous process that is occurring for every team that's doing this exact process. And many teams choose to get out of this cycle because they're choosing short-term speed gains for basically the long-term of being able to do it at scale for their entire organization. Yeah, and I, you know what I see at a lot of our, our clients is that um, my number's not, your number's not right, that doesn't make sense. So there's like also trust issues that um, happen as well in this process. Imagine a world where companies don't have to take this data out. Mm -hmm there's still another dilemma that exists in this cycle, and it has to do with the final step of dashboards. And the reality is, is that after uh, any business user highlights the value of what they've created in a dashboard, someone asks like a pesky what if scenario, and that what if scenario cannot be supported by dashboards. So what do they have to do? They have to take this data back out, put it in a spreadsheet, mm. And they have to do additional analysis. They have to add their own context to the data. And they add, as they add that context, then they can come up with new insights in that uh, dashboard. But it's only possible by exporting the data out. Yeah, because a lot of times they're exporting it you know, out of a dashboard because they want to do some sort of like scenario modeling. And you know, dashboards aren't built for that, right? That's the traditional way of thinking. It isn't supported. Mm. Now, uh, so we could add sort of like adding context to the data to our, our list here. And we've gone through this process and really it's been a limitation of traditional business intelligence. Now, if we start thinking about what Sigma does and how it supports customers, it has to do with this workflow right here and thinking through getting the data ready. So a lot of this came back down to getting the data ready. Mm. With Sigma, when we think about what it does, is that it provides access to billions of records at scale at the grain of the data so that their data teams, those engineering teams, don't need to actually roll up the data. Mm. They start at the grain, whatever it is, and you work directly from that data. And the business team, they have the ability to explore this data in any way that they want, and they can see the grain of the data, which is a novel, well, it's not really that new of a, uh, an approach, but it's not something traditional business intelligence has afforded business users today, just because of the lack of the architectural support that exists in that traditional world. Okay, and so you're saying like a, if they were using Sigma, they could explore to their heart's content, um, but what about like, 
how does it prevent the export to Excel? Like, what's that? Yeah, so great. We've uh, eliminated the need for tickets and engineering to make updates to this data because they can immediately explore from step one to the export piece. This is where Sigma's proprietary right back to the data warehouse happens. We call it input tables, mm -hmm. where you have the ability to add a column to an existing dashboard, if you will, or a workbook, add that context in without ever having that data leave the data warehouse. And that doesn't li live in Sigma, right? No, it doesn't live in Sigma. It's the, anything that we add to this column goes automatically back into the data warehouse. Understood. So when we think about the challenges, if we go back to this BI vortex, this dashboard dilemma, with Sigma, it's streamlined. It's one straight flow. With legacy BI, there is no way around this process. You have to roll up data to a certain level so your business users can explore it. And regardless, it's never going to be the level of detail they want. Mm -hmm. And they're going to have to put in a ticket and engineering is going to have to update it. There's no, with this whole process, there's no self-service. There's no yeah. way to do it. The, the people over here, the engineers, have to predict what the business people are going to need, but that's impossible. You can't predict everything they're going to need. That's right. Yeah. So when we think about coming back and sort of summarizing what we have here, with traditional BI, there's a dilemma with the dashboard. And it has to do with the underlying technology of not being able to support data at scale. With Sigma, that's not a problem. It's designed to work at scale at the most granular data. And as soon as you're able to connect to that grain, you're able to bring insights in a streamlined flow that will minimize the amount of work that engineers need to do, minimize the number of requests that the business are providing back to the engineers so that you have teams that are working at high, highly effective speeds to do the jobs that they were actually hired to do. Awesome. Well, this has been a super fun and insightful Lightboard experience. I'd love to do this again with you. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, tuning into this one. Thanks everybody.